Welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Dennis Zen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk, where we'll be talking about all these great news coming from E3 and video game. Ga- no, no, we're not doing <laughs> What? <laughs> also here, John Schnepp. Yeah, all this amazing news has been dropping. What's going on? I was I just dropped out of uh, Metropolis, Illinois. I wanted to thank everyone who came out. All you Superman fans, you were awesome. I had a great time. Also here, Perry Nemiroff. Hi, guys. If you want your E3 news, you might see a little of it on Collider News today. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to remind you guys that we have that contest. The Comic-Con contest is a trip to San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, this July, it's you plus one guest. You get airfare, what? you get a hotel room, yeah. you get spending money, All you get right. the badges, Man. and you probably get a chance to meet a bunch of us at our meetup during Comic-Con. I want to remind you, we have the description and a link in the description on YouTube. Click there. It ends at uh, the end of this month. Uh, another thing on the sidebar, we don't have this, but another trailer dropped early this morning, and that's the new Ben-Hur trailer. Ashley, why don't you tell us about it? That Paramount has released a new Ben Hur trailer and featurette, directed by Wanted and Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter Helmer Timur Bekmambetov. The film tells the epic story of Judah Ben Hur, played by Jack Houston, a prince falsely accused of treason by his brother Masala, played by Toby Kebbell. Along the way, Ben Hur learns the value of redemption from Jesus. The movie is based in part on the Lou Wallace novel Ben Hur, A Tale of the Christ. The film opens on August 12th and also stars Morgan Freeman. Rodrigo Santoro and Nazanin Banyadi. Dennis, thoughts on the new trailer and featurette for Ben Hur? Well, I mean, the first thing that really stands out is that song. That song. Well, you didn't like it? It it sounds like it's for like a, a YA uh, movie. Yeah, I, totally. I, it's really out of place. You know, we had talked about, you know, Assassin's Creed and that Kanye song that was out of place. This song seems out of place. You know, I, I recently rewatched Ben Hur uh, probably a month ago, and and some of the shots in this trailer are very, very similar to what we've seen in, in the original. But then there seems to be that they're weaving in the Jesus storyline a much more because I think if I remember in, in the original it was there, but it kind of came and went. Where this one, at least the trailer, makes it seem like it's an integral part of this new movie. I, you know, I it, this is one of those things where it's, I'm just not sure why they're making this film mm-hmm. because it doesn't seem to be adding anything new to it, and it's not a different take, a different perspective. So I, I'm just not I'm not that excited for it because I just don't see the reason for it, Perry. Well, you know how I feel about Toby Kebbell, so it's hard for me not to be excited at all about this, but I, I do, seriously. I like Toby Kebbell as an actor. I like Jack Houston as a character. I want good things for both of them. I don't know if this is going to be it. I don't have much of an attachment to the original Ben-Hur, mm-hmm. so when we found out this movie was happening, I didn't really care all that much, and when the trailer came out, the first one at least, it was fine. I actually think I like this one more for like the cheesy Hollywood style. It puts <laughs> like that, it, it worked its magic. It made me a little more interested, but probably not for the right reasons. However, just to talk about that featurette real quick, I thought that was really cool because I love movie magic and I love to see that they're doing all the chariot racing mm-hmm. uh, for real. Snip. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I thought that music just threw me out <laughs> of the of the trailer. I thought, is this a young adult? Vamp- mm-hmm. Are two vampires gonna show up? Um, it just literally uh, made me start laughing out loud. And I, then I, did, I don't even remember the rest of the trailer. I just was like, this garbage music shows up. And I was like, stupid edits. And I just can't even think about Ben Hur anymore. I actually was- had a harder time digesting the Morgan Freeman voiceover. No, that's what th- I was like, are penguins going to show up? It's like the worst <laughs> thing you could do nowadays is use Morgan Freeman to introduce your trailer because you instantly thought, think of penguin. I do. I think of penguins, and then they had the stupid... His hair, man. Uh, well, Morgan Freeman's hair <laughs> in the thing. It threw right. me off. I was like, is this the... Th- he seems out of place. I'm yeah. like, well, what movie are you he in? He is the older vampire, you know, yeah. who's about to... That's a, the, yeah, it's a really all-over-the-place trailer for you me. You should I, rewrite and recut this movie. Man, I, I, would I would watch it. I would love to have my hands on the, all the footage of this trailer. I'd make a masterpiece. But, uh, yeah, so far, the first... I like the first Ben-Hur trailer better before they did this kind of weird mishmash. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Is it like a, a, a second telling of Passion of the Christ? Is it like... 
I don't get it really. So you know. I, I wish I had just seen the featurette because I watched that first before the trailer, and I watched it. And like I mentioned before about the trailer, a lot of the shots seem very similar to the original. Mm-hmm. And, and the chariot races is the best part of the original right. Ben Hur, which it was actually directed by the second unit. Um, and this looked really cool. I hope they don't use any of those kind of GoPro shots that they they had in this featurette. Yeah. Uh, and they keep it just more to you know the the the, uh, the arm shots and and behind the horses. I thought that looked cool. If I had just watched that, I think I would have been a lot more excited. But then I watched the trailer after that. Yeah, and I think the director does really good. He's really good at telling these big kind of sprawling action films. He comes from doing. I believe he did Day Watch and he all did those Wanted, vampire. right? Yeah. Uh, Wanted, mm-hmm. yep. And he did the Vampire Hunter film. So. I don't know. Some of the some of the shots felt like very three hundred ish. Where I don't need to see another dude jump like jumping off of a mount, some rock with a sword. I just can we st- put like a moratorium on, on any of those shots? You know, so I, just, I don't know. Let's try to like the trailer. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our first topic. Ashley, what do we got? The latest trailer for Pete's Dragon has been released, giving fans a more in-depth look at the live-action adaptation of the Disney classic, with many fans commenting on the Spielbergish vibe. The movie is co-written and directed by Ain't Them Body Saints, David Lowery, and stars Bryce Dallas Howard, Oakes Fegley, Wes Bentley, Carl Urban, Una Lawrence, and Robert Redford. Pete's Dragon will be released by Disney nationwide on August 12th. Dennis, thoughts on the new Pete's Dragon trailer? I thought it was all right. I mean, it looked like a, a kid's Tarzan. You know, we have the Tarzan movie coming out, and then we got this one, except for it's for kids. You know, we I talked about this before, and I'm still going to complain about it. The dragon. Why is he furry? Why he's He looks like a big dog or, or tiger or something like that. They, I mean, I know why. They're making it so that he's cute, so they can sell toys. Instant plush he, animal. Yeah, they want to make it like... But he's not a real dragon. At least in my mind, he's not a real dragon. Dragon has to have scales. Perry, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. The one thing that's holding me back from real from being really hyped about this movie is the look of the dragon. And I think now more so than ever, because the rest of the trailer, it did have a Spielberg vibe to it. And mm. I was totally into that. Just between the color palette and the shot. Like like when the young boy is um uh he's jumping on the the bus and all the kids on the bus are looking out the window. Something about those types of shots just screams Spielberg and, you know, an E.T., Elliot, whatever, kind of vibe here. Mm -hmm. But then you throw the dragon in, and I don't necessarily think the look of the dragon is all that bad, but it doesn't really fit with that for me. I gotta say, I actually like this trailer, and I like the look of this furry dragon, because dinosaurs had feathers, guys. You gotta go back and like, there. Uh, I want to see new dra- dinosaur movies where they all look like peacocks with like a weird, crazy, like rainbow Tyrannosaurus Rex, like oh, feathers man. all over the place. Uh, imagine a Jurassic yeah. World two is like it. that. They As should. They, they should add terrible. that because they all had feathers. And and why not? Ha- can, why can't a dragon be furry, like a little cat or a little? Dog, because that's what it, lo- it feels like. That to me, it's not a dragon. Well, it's a well, it's dragons don't turn dragon dragons don't jail. turn invisible. The they don't turn though. invisible either. So you know, right. this is a, a, a totally. It's you're just calling it a dragon. What? It, maybe it's a wonder morph or a scrimble scramp. We don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, maybe, called a, it's called a it's, money maker. He's they're, calling they're, it they're Elliot. Sell a bunch of these. I'm buying to the one, kids. son. They right. sold a dragon. I'm buying. You know one. what's gonna happen? I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna gonna be, oh my god, the dragon! Dennis so is cute. gonna be crying. Be the first one with the pop toy on he's your gonna, desk. He's gonna be holding a little snuggly Pete's dragon, yeah. crying. And, I was so wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I, I do like the cast, though. You had Robert Redford mm-hmm. in there, Bryce Dallas Howard, yeah, uh, even Wes Bentley, who kind of disappeared for a while after American Beauty, but now totally. he's. He's been busy with American yeah. Horror Story. Well, and yeah. he's been in he Interstellar. Was in Hunger, he had Hunger Games, he was Interstellar. In Interstellar. Yeah, and then now he's in this. Uh, Carl Urban kind of plays the villain yeah. this character, which has he has he played a villain before? I think he has. In in oh, he was in that priest. He played the weird guy with the <laughs> hat, and he was like, "I'm gonna kill you." Yeah. Yeah. And then, and for you Wire fans, you'll recognize the actor that plays Senator Clay Davis. If you guys remember, he's the guy who always goes shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he has his own like little bobbleheads. So I was excited to see him. Uh, the little girl from Southpaw yeah. is in that movie. She, if you want to look up something really cool with her in it, go look up the short Penny Dreadful. She is so freaking good in that. And it's a really fun short. A film school friend of mine made it. And she's fantastic in that. And you know, she was in Matilda. She's doing great stuff here. And I, I forget the, the boy's name in this, but he looks great too. It's like, we're you know, you're poking fun a little that it's kind of like Tarzan, but the yeah. physicality mm-hmm. of that character and his performance in just this trailer footage alone, I think these are two really yeah, great Yeah, him and Mowgli here. should team up. You know, Mowgli and yeah, Tarzan, really. yeah. all three of them. Just 
hanging out in the forest or jungle. I, I, I would watch that. Okay. All right. What's next? According to a report from THR, San Andreas director Brad Payton has come on board to direct Malignant Man, a sci-fi action project being produced by Conjuring 2 director James Wan, based on the Boom Studios comic that he co-created. The story focuses on Alex Gates, a patient dying of a terminal disease who is resigned to his fate until he discovers that his malignant tumor is actually a mysterious alien parasite. And now with some incredible powers and a renewed purpose, Gates is tasked with fighting a secret army lurking behind the veils of society while also peeling back his own secrets. It's unclear when production on Malignant Man will actually begin. Peyton will next tackle directing duties on San Andreas 2 with Dwayne Johnson. Juan, meanwhile, is prepping Aquaman with Jason Momoa for 2018. Schnapp, what do you think about a film adaptation for Malignant Man? I like the idea. I haven't, I haven't actually checked out the comic book yet, Malignant Man, but the thing that cracks me up about this is San Andreas 2? They're making a San Andreas <laughs> made money. 2? The first one made money. Can we just look at the last two years of all these sequels that didn't need a sequel that failed at the box office? I, I'm telling you right now, that is going to be one of the biggest bombs ever. San Andreas 2. Electric Boogaloo. It's a. It's, no one is wanted. I liked San Andreas too. I thought it was a fun action film. It was a good ride about destruction. What else are they going to destroy? They destroyed everything in San Andreas. Everything is. What is it going to be in the future? And The Rock is a robot rebuilding the world. What? I'd watch no that sense. movie. I don't know what it's going to be, but Malignant Man, I'm totally into. I like the idea of it, but I didn't read it. Perry, you read it. I read very little of it because I'm a big James Wan fan, mm -hmm. so I was curious and. I, I don't, I didn't not like it. There are ideas in it that I think are really cool and there's visuals that could be really cinematic, but at the same time, I, I just didn't love the, the comic itself, especially mm. the second issue. It's just so exposition heavy. Mm. And there's all this, like the log line might sound really cool, but there's all this backstory and these rules and these organizations and it's all thrown at you so fast that when I read it, I kind of couldn't process it all. So now I can't picture how it would look on screen without, you know, exposition overload in the first act, but I don't know. I mean, James Wan clearly cares about this. Brad Payton is fine. I wasn't blown away by him as a director from San Andreas, even though I did have fun with that mm -hmm. movie, but I kind of like lukewarm on this idea. Maybe if they tighten up the story a little bit. What's interesting to me about this story is that James Wan himself isn't directing. I know he's super busy right. and he's in high demand just because if he's the co-creator of this, I thought he had a more vested interest in, instead of handing off to somebody else. And who knows, you know, since Peyton already has a relationship with The Rock and Rock is in like every other movie, maybe he could be a malignant man too. <laughs> he, I mean, he doesn't sleep, right? Is he, right. He, he, he certainly doesn't look like the main character. It doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. The Rock can play anything. He'll except, be in anything. Except that at the very beginning of the comic, he's supposed to be dying of terminal cancer and his body definitely shows that. So I think, CGI. I think the Rock... CGI. Oh boy. I would just change the title. I don't like... I mean, me personally, I would just call it malignant. That sounds more creepy and like scary. But malignant man is just... Maze. Superman, meet Malignant Man. It's just a weird title. So, Is the comic book supposed to be dead serious or is there some humor to it? I mean... It's it's kind of serious. Really? It's serious and it's it's pretty bloody and violent mm, too. Okay. I'm and gonna I check, mean, I'll the, check it out. The mythology behind it is kind of cool. I will say that. I just didn't like the way it was presented in the form of the comic. Well, okay. I bet you I haven't read the comic, but I bet James Wan didn't write the comic. I, th I bet he just came to Boom and was like, yo, I got this cool idea. Here's the story. And then someone else wrote it. So. Yeah, I forget the name of the writer and the, the artist behind it, but they, they all did it together. Mm -hmm. So right on. we'll say. It must be nice to like just go to a comic <laughs> studio. Hey, got an idea. Yeah, you hired the writer and the artist and well, you guys take care of that. <laughs> All right. Before we get into buy or sell, uh, let's check in with Wendy. What are people saying about the Ben-Hur trailer, the Pete's Dragon trailer, and uh, Malignant Man? Lots of trailers today. All right. To start with the Ben-Hur trailer, a lot of the chat are saying that the music sucked and they're just not interested. That's right. Grambo 19. Is that Whispergate over there? <laughs> Grambo 19 <laughs> says, oh we didn't need this remake. <laughs> and the Modern Portfolio says, Toby Kebbell is so talented but needs a new agent. For the Pete's <laughs> tra uh, Dragon trailer, a lot of the chat agrees with you, Dennis. Why is the dragon furry? Ishan Parmarn says, Dragon looks bad. Bryce Dallas Howard's acting looks wooden and she's doing the same acting she did in Jurassic World. Looks boring. And finally, for the Malignant Man story, some are saying this is an interesting concept, 
Christian Jones says, I really, oh, sorry, wrong person. T. Kane says, I read the book and I can't wait. It sounds great. Cool. All right, now we're on to buy or sell. Ashley, what do we got up first? When the first trailer for Doctor Strange debuted, fans were given a look at the noticeably different Mar Marvel movie, with many fans comparing it to Inception and The Matrix, but in the MCU. And while the final product will probably follow the familiar beats of a Marvel movie, Mads Mikkelsen, who plays the film's mysterious villain, says the movie will be offering a twist on what we can expect. Speaking with Yahoo, Mikkelsen said, If you look at the comic books, the comic books are quite different to other Marvel stories. I think that the film will be different from the other Marvel films that we've seen, but not as different as the books are, because that was basically the 60s and 70s. It was more like an acid trip. As to whether or not we'll be getting a totally psychedelic Marvel entry, Mickelson said, We've taken that fascination of the time into something we can relate to today. So you still have the energy, you still have the colors, you still have the madness, but you also have something you can identify with. I think that was a necessity. If not, you would just make a crazy film, but you still have it there. You have all the action, all the good ingredients you get in a Marvel film, but it will have a different flavor, that's for sure. Fans will finally get to see this different flavor when Doctor Strange opens later this year on November 6th. Perry Byersell Mickelson's comments about a different Marvel entry with Doctor Strange. I, I guess I buy it because all that sounds good to me. It's not really a meaty news quote here, but I like the sound of all this. I loved the first trailer and I figured this was the direction they were taking it in and it seems like a smart move. You know, we all say, oh, we want movies to be different. And I, I do like getting different Marvel movies. Guardians of the Galaxy is one of my favorites, so I want this one to have a very different vibe. But at the same time, you got to respect the fact that the larger audience out there, you know, maybe they can't handle it to a certain extent. So finding a nice little balance between the two sounds perfect to me. Yeah, yeah. Snap. I think it's, uh, you know, all of his comments sound great. I love Mads Mikkelsen. I think he's one of the greatest actors out there. Super bummed they didn't finish Hannibal. Maybe they'll get on it, finish Hannibal someday. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he's basically saying what we kind of already knew. It's like, look, the comic book Doctor Strange is not like Spider-Man. It's not like... <laughs> Uh, you know, X Men is, is is it's its own thing, and it's all like magical and mystical. And if you've never seen Doctor Strange, check it out. There's a whole bunch of amazing comics that I can recommend to you. Go to Collider Heroes. We've done a bunch of recommendations, or look it up online. You'll you'll see a bunch of stuff. But I think you know my guess as to who he's playing. I think he's playing an unknown sorcerer, maybe maybe from the comics, maybe a new character, but that he's infected by Dormammu. And that's what that mm. crackling is, is maybe his face at the end will turn into a giant ball of flames. Who knows? But I love his comments. I'll, I'll buy his comments, even though it's a lot of talking and it, it just kind of boils down to, yeah, you're, you're going to get some familiar stuff from like all other Marvel movies, but it's going to have a different style. Kind of like how we got, you, you mentioned uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Also, Ant-Man had that heist mm -hmm. flavor. And then you had Winter Soldier had that spy thriller flavor. So that's kind of what Marvel is doing. They're not going to branch out so it's going to be totally a deviation from what they normally do. Because right. they do have to bring in that casual audience. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be that crazy. But at the same time, we'll, we'll get something new. And I think that's what they need to do in order to keep uh, fans to come back because they don't want to see the same movie over and well, over again. Well, especially with Marvel, they already have like the dark arts aspect of Marvel. They've ha played a little bit with it before they were the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Blade, and they've got all these other amazing properties. You have like, you know, obviously they've, they haven't been able to do Ghost Rider yet either. That was outside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this is the first horror Marvel film, basically. Um, and I'm looking forward to it because that can introduce all the other weirdo characters. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. When you pitch it that way, it gets me. Yeah. I love the sound of that. Like all the villains I keep reading about, they all have some sort of Freddy Krueger-ish spin on them. Mm -hmm. So the thought of that happening really excites me. Yeah. All, right. all right, what's next? The idea of an Independence Day sequel changed a few times before finally getting a green light. Originally, director Roland Emmerich wrote multiple sequels with Will Smith in mind to reprise his role as Captain Hiller. When that didn't happen, he had Hiller die during a test fight of new alien technology. What ended up in the final cut of Independence Day Resurgence is a story about a team of young individuals fighting a new wave of alien invaders using alien tech recovered from the first. During a stint as guest editor for Empire Magazine, Emmerich answered fan questions and revealed an early concept for the sequel. 
It was after 9-11 and producer Dean Devlin and I wanted to make the movie about peace and it just didn't work. There's still an element of that in the new one, but that version was only about that. We shoot aliens down accidentally and then at the end of the movie, they land on the White House lawn and say we come in peace and that was it. It was just too weak an idea. We didn't really want to do it. It didn't have an Independence Day feel, only the alien ship was destroyed. Emmerich added that he didn't plan on making a sequel, but the studio continuously asked him to make one saying, I always felt that Independence Day was a standalone film, but over the years I realized how iconic the film had become for people, and I was repeatedly asked by 20th Century Fox to do it. What really did it was just how amazing film technology is these days and how restricted I felt in 95-96 when I did the original one, but it's not a traditional sequel. Dennis, buy or sell Emmerich's comments on a different sequel for Independence Day. Uh, I buy the comments that they didn't do it because this sounds really stupid. <laughs> I don't know how you make a movie out of that. And I understand that, you know, this is after 9-11, so they, they were a little, you know, taken aback by that. And they, but, I mean, I, I'm sure they look back now and go, well, what the F were we thinking? Because that's the worst idea for an alien movie ever. Like, who's going to watch that thing? That the aliens get shot down and they're like, oh, we come in peace? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Perry, as a huge yeah, Independence yeah. Day fan, what do you think about these comments? You know I'll watch anything and everything Independence Day. This is just so stupid. I mean, I don't know whether to buy it because it's not happening or to sell it because this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. There's something, I guess, interesting about the idea because I always think about what's the insurance adjuster uh, superhero TV show? You know that thing where you see superheroes fight, but you always wonder, you know, how do they insure everything? Or like the little things that go on behind the scenes. Maybe this is some sort of alien invasion version of that, kind of? Right. I don't know. But this is just so ridiculous. And thank God they didn't do it because this would have kind of killed the franchise moving forward. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. I think it's a great idea. Oh, God. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. I buy, I buy that they didn't go with this idea. This idea is more like a 30-minute Twilight Zone. Like, the aliens are here. We must arm ourselves and all that. And then at the end, they shoot them down. They're like, we come in peace. Yeah. Oh, I'd like, watch that. That's 19 minutes. Yo, that's not a two-hour mm -hmm. Independence Day sequel. But it makes sense that you know they were probably like, yeah, after 9-11, they were like, we should show all of our you know different countries warring with each other and arguing. Mm -hmm. And they just can't come together. But they won't come together. The Aliens were there to unite us all along, or whatever. Oh, this is you're right. I can't even make it sound good. It's a horrible idea. So I'm glad that they didn't do that. I don't know if this Independence Day sequel is going to be good or not. I was down on it for many years when I first ID Forever, whatever those horrible trash titles. <laughs> I'm glad those are gone, and I'm glad they're not doing like three or four extra movies. There's just one movie right now, so they probably just smashed everything into one thing. That last trailer sold me. They're on the moon. You know, they're going to destroy more monuments. I'm in. So at least they're not in peace. It's a, a giant battle. And like if the aliens did come back and want to say we come in peace, they would have to be choking a human with their tentacles <laughs> like, like that. And that That's just right. wouldn't work at all. Yeah. And speaking of Independence Day, we actually did an Ind Independence Day commentary. It was uh, me, Christian and Perry over there. Perry. <laughs> The whole time is trying to like mouth quotes to, for sorry. every single really sorry. line in the movie. How many times have you seen Independence Day? I can't even count. Okay. And the thing is, the crazy thing that you pointed pointed out is that I haven't even seen the extended cut. I keep watching. I have a digital copy of it that I keep watching. And also, I'm obsessed with my original VHS tape. I don't know if any of you guys have it, but the one where you like turn the tape and it's like White House, White House explosion. Mm -hmm. I love the thing. Look at the fancy <laughs> technology from the 90s. Wait, there's an extended edition of Independence Day. Wasn't there it already is. like three hours? I mean, it's how, like two and a half hours half, already. Yeah. What more do they add? I, I don't know. I didn't watch it. But I we, will find out. We did, we did a, a version of the theatrical cut. We're going to put that up tomorrow so you guys get ready. I know Perry's super hmm. excited for, for the sequel. All right. Uh, let's see what's next. Straight from E3 comes a new feature for the Assassin's Creed film starring Michael Fassbender as Callum Lynch. While the actor and his Macbeth helmer, Justin Kurzel, tease the intense action sequences and the cinematic experience of the video game brought to life, the footage takes us on a trip through time and Callum's past life, with Fassbender explaining that there are two major forces in the film, the Assassins who fight for free will and their adversaries, the Templars who are trying to enhance humankind through science. Fans will no doubt be excited 
excited to see Kersel and his crew are utilizing various locales and sweeping vistas for a full-fledged vision of the game to film adaptation. Assassin's Creed is scheduled for release on December 21st and stars Fassbender, Marion Cotillard, Jeremy Irons, Brendan Gleeson, Michael K. Williams, and Ariane Leipt. Schnepp buy or sell the new featurette from Assassin's Creed. I buy it. I thought it was a really fun uh, look into the behind the scenes making of the film. I was really happy to hear, you know, especially you see from the trailer, but you see that, you know, they're going to be exploring the Templars and how they've been trying to fix and adjust, you know, humanity and give us, you know, science and things like that. So um, the one thing I don't sell is like, it feels like the studio set made Kurtzel say, it's going to be a fantastic ride. It felt like that was like a sound bite. They were like, here, you said all these intelligent things. Now mention it and say something really stupid about the film and, and ruin it for all the intelligent people who want to see this film. It is going to be, a f all they want to do is make a fantastic ride. I can't stand when they call movies rides. Knock it off. Anyway, I love the feature, Ed. Uh, it's a big buy for me. I, I love it. Um, we, one of the complaints we had for the Assassin's Creed, the first trailer, even though I think most of us generally liked it, was the music. We didn't think think that the Kanye music fit with it. They had the music, score music in here, and oh, that fit a great. lot better. So, And we also got to see some new footage in here. I love Michael Fassbender and Kurzel talking about the film because they seem genuinely uh, enthusiastic about it. And in someone of Fassbender's talents, that he's willing to spearhead this thing, produce it, star mm -hmm. in it, try and get this out there. I, I, I'm excited for this film, yeah. Perry. Yeah, what's well, not to buy. I mean, I, I understand why they used that Kanye song, but they really didn't even need to use that trick in that trailer at all. Cause you watch this and this is something that's a featurette that's cut with interviews and it's still so much more cinematic and you get such a better sense of the atmosphere with the score, even though it's intercut with interview footage. It was completely wasted to have done that with the other trailer. But I love this. I can't wait to get more featurettes for this movie because I forget which Collider.com writer went on the set visit, but I think it was Adam Chitwood. But in all of his interviews, they keep talking about how they're doing a lot of in-camera stuff with all the parkour. Mm -hmm. So even though this featurette does scratch the surface of the behind the scenes stuff, I feel like there's so much more good content that we're gonna get out of this. Yeah, and as long as they try and make everything as practical as possible so we don't get too... I know it's a video game movie, <laughs> but we don't want it to feel like when they're jumping from building to building. We don't want to see, like, CG happening. Right, or there. wire removal. Like, mm -hmm. that guy's obviously floating. There was know? actually a quote in, about that in one of the interviews he did where they recognized the fact that even though it's an adaptation of a game, they're well aware that it needs to feel like everything that's happening can happen mm -hmm. in the real world. Yeah. And I didn't realize Jeremy Irons is in it, uh, Brendan Gleeson, and then Michael K. Williams, who was Omar from, from The yeah. Wire, and uh, Chalky yeah. White in yeah. uh, Boardwalk Empire. So that makes me... Even Another wire time. actor. Yes. Yeah, they're everywhere Scribbling now. in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? When it comes to Deadpool 2, we know very little about what we will see in the sequel other than a return of Ryan Reynolds as the Merc with the Mouth alongside director Tim Miller and screenwriters Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick along with a with a promise of the bionic arm cable character. That's not much to go on, but while we wait for more information to come to light, actor Ed Green has an idea for who the new villain should be. While Ajax, aka Francis, is unlikely to return, Screen said he'd like to see Deadpool battle the Taskmaster in the sequel, a character whose ability in the comics was dubbed photographic reflexes, meaning he could mimic the abilities and movements of those around him. Speaking with IGN, Screen said, to see Taskmaster and Wade Wilson Deadpool together is so funny. Watching them play in the Daniel Way collection, they have these incredible riffs. He's a mercenary like Wade Wilson, but he's a mercenary without morals. The only redeeming factor of Deadpool is his morals, right? Taskmaster doesn't have those morals, so he backstabs and stuff like that. He's a hilarious character and he looks so cool, you know? The skull head, the hood, and his superpower is he can copy anyone's fighting style. Can you imagine that visually? If he fought Deadpool, pool and started whipping things around and doing all the flips and then fought Wolverine. It would be phenomenal. He's an incredible character. No other casting news has been revealed for Deadpool 2, and a release date has yet to be decided. Perry, uh, buy or sell the idea of Taskmaster and Deadpool 2? Ooh, I buy it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I definitely buy this idea, but at the same time, you know, this is an actor from the first film who is unlikely to return. He's just expressing interest in something, mm. so I definitely wouldn't get too carried away with this just yet. But after this broke, I 
watched a whole bunch of stuff about Taskmaster and yeah, this is a really cool, potentially very cinematic character and I love the idea of it. We had, we did a Collider News story on it today and I was talking to Jonathan and he brought up the point though, who has the rights to this character? Like would would any of you know? No, he's he's in the rights of uh, of, of, uh, of Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So th I I think Taskmaster is gonna be in Deadpool too. He's a, he, not only is he a great looking character, he's been in the Deadpool comics. I think it makes a lot of sense, and a lot of fans out there have been calling for Taskmaster to be in the film. I even think he was in earlier draft of the original Deadpool movie, and they had to remove him. So they had to cut out a lot of different characters when they shrunk the budget down when they approved to do the R-rated Deadpool. Now that that movie is like the giant blockbuster monster that it is of this year, they literally have, you know, they could do whatever they want. So I think Miller and crew are going to be able to not only add back in all the characters that they had to cut out of the first Deadpool script, but they're going to have a lot of fun. So I can almost guarantee you that Taskmaster is going to be in there. Uh, I'm going to sell it. It's nothing against Taskmaster himself, but I, because I know Cable is going to be in the second Deadpool, I feel like you need a villain more appropriate for him. That's kind of why I was disappointed with what happened with Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe they could go down one of my favorite X-Men storylines, which is the legacy virus with Strife and Apocalypse. So I, I just that's the reason. I want someone that's more fitting towards Cable and Deadpool at the same time. All right, guys, uh, let's check in with Wendy and see what you guys said about our buy or sell. All right, let's start with the Doctor Strange story. I'm seeing a lot of buys for this. Heath Jones says, I buy his common, and although I know very little about Doctor Strange, I'm looking forward to this movie. And Lily Musai says, I am glad Marvel is trying something new. I buy. Sounds like an intriguing film. For the Independence Day comment, uh, seeing a lot of sell for this, Max Power says, don't care about those comments, but nobody needs an Independence Day sequel, especially not with Mini Thor and discount Will Smith. Oof. Whoa, damn. <laughs> and Ooh. for the Assassin's Creed featurette, I saw a lot of buys for the featurette. Uh, Ken Dog 909 says, I really enjoy the first trailer, minus the music, but in this featurette, you get some new footage and a little more insight into the plot, hoping to, for something epic. And finally, for the Taskmaster, as the villain for Deadpool 2, a lot of the chat is buying this, and there's also a heavy discussion in the chat on who really owns the right to Taskmaster. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, now we're on to our weekly segment opening this weekend, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Ashley, what do we got? It's Central Intelligence. Bullied as a teen for being overweight, Bob Stone, Dwayne Johnson, shows up to his high school reunion looking fit and muscular. While there, he finds Calvin Joyner, Kevin Hart, a fast-talking accountant who misses his glory days as a popular athlete. Stone is now a lethal CIA agent who needs Calvin's number skills to help him save the compromised U.S. spy satellite system. Together, the former classmates encounter shootouts, espionage, and double crosses while trying to prevent worldwide chaos. I'm actually looking forward to this. I mean, Kevin Hart is kind of starting to become like Will Ferrell, where he just has two or three comedies a year, and a lot of the, you just, they kind of start becoming generic, and, and I like Kevin Hart. Uh, but this one in particular, it looks like it's maybe a little something different, especially with The Rock being in it. Mm -hmm. I know The Rock is not this master actor, but at least he's he's taking on different roles. Like his character in Snitch is different than his character in the in Ballers, and different and then the character in here. He's trying to at least stretch him, uh, you know, acting wise, his his acting chops. I I think the trailers look funny, so I'm looking forward to this. Schnapp. Yeah, I you know the the first and second trailer from this film had me laughing. I think The Rock has a natural comedic sensibility. Uh, he knows he's just. I mean, he radiates funny in this in the in these trailers, and I like that Kevin Hart is playing the straight man who's like, "What's happening to me?" Like even that shot of him, like in that you know the, in that cart when he's either wheeling off and you know just crazy stuff that's happening. It's the Rock that's doing the crazy insanity, and Kevin Hart is just kind of getting dragged along with it. So uh, I think it's I can't wait to see it. I I I I love this film before right. seeing it. Sorry. I'm still having a hard time shaking off uh, Get Hard, the one uh, with uh, Kevin Hart and Will Ferrell from last year. Yeah, so I didn't see that one. It's hard to be 100% excited about this, but I'm going to see it tomorrow night, and I'm okay with it. I find the two of them to be very, very likable in any movie that they're in, like even in Get, Get Hard. I think Kevin Hart's character is pretty warm and friendly and nice and normal, so I'm looking forward to seeing the two of them in this. But Did you see you know. Ride Along 2? I have avoided the ride. Okay, because this get hard makes the you know. <laughs> oh really? Lo lo looks looks oh, like boy. a laugh riot compared Ooh. to ride along Ouch. too. Yeah. All right. 
Um, all right, guys, now we're on to a mailbag. This is a section where we answer your viewer submitted questions. How do you uh, get those questions in? You email us at collidervideo at gmail.com. We'll answer them here on Movie Talk or on our weekend mailbag show. Ashley, what do we got up first? Sterling Jones writes, greetings. Before you read, put that spoiler alert up, please. And all of your years of watching film, name two <laughs> of your favorite darkest characters. Mine are one, Elizabeth Salander, played by Numi Rapace and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Seeing Elizabeth watching a man die in a burning car with an almost excited look on her face shook me. Two, Lisa Rowe, played by Angelina Jolie and Girl Interrupted. The scene where she just, without lifting a finger, verbally destroys Daisy, played by the late Brittany Murphy, which led date to Daisy's suicide in the next scene, left me cold. Have a good day and keep bringing the filthy. Well, I know you asked for two, but <laughs> I only have one, and that's uh, Alex from A Clockwork Orange, played by Malcolm McDowell young violent sociopath every time i hear singing in the rain i don't think of the movie version i think of the version his character sings while doing violent things in, in, in that or, or even molly malone army so oh, molly yeah. malone like they had that in preacher uh, the cassidy character was singing that and i instantly thought of clockwork orange that's a great one joker from the dark knight is another one that's one of them i'll give you two why not and then anton sugar from uh, no country for old men I, you know, I prefer like, uh, I love monsters and, and super villains and things like that, but the ones that really get me are the human characters, the ones who are like actually evil humans. So Ant, I'll, I'll give you sugar for No Country for Old Men, check it out. Okay, I jotted down a couple. I went with Hans Landa from uh, Inglorious Bastards because oh, yeah. mm. that first scene is haunting. Annie Wilkes and Hannibal Lecter seem like obvious choices to me, but I, based on what, what, the, uh, what the writer said about their favorite scenes, it made me think of a scene from a movie called Mean Creek. Have you ever seen that it's oh, kind of the a, Australian it, uh, murderer guy no is, it's, oh, it's about different. bullying and it's with a bunch of kids and like it's about one picking on the other but it's not a traditional bully movie in that the bully in that the loser that they target is helpless he's a jerk in a sense too and there's this really vicious scene where the bully and the the he's not really a nerd I don't really know the right word to describe him but he's played by Josh Peck when he was a little heavier so they pick on him and the two of them just go at it in such a mean vicious brutal way that scene left me cold Ew. all right all right what's next Hannah Bennett writes, Hey, people of Collider Movie Talk, since it is your job to review movies, it seems like it would be hard to keep continual scrutiny from ruining your ability to enjoy movies. When do you think is the right time to exercise willing suspension of disbelief, and when do you choose to be more critical? Thanks. Uh, I have no problem turning off my brain for, for certain movies, but for me, it always comes down to tone. That's why, you know, I always kind of you see me ridicule the, the Transformers franchise because in them I feel like they are trying to be too serious and then two, when they try to do humor in it, it falls flat so you don't get that sense. We're like, we watched uh, Independence Day yesterday. That's a movie where there are logic problems throughout the film. However, because of the tone of the film, there's kind of a lighthearted jokiness to a lot of it. I mean, it's a silly concept that we just all buy into and you can turn off your brain for that. Same with the Fast and the Furious franchise because I really didn't like the first two films because I felt like, oh, they're trying to make a serious drama here where once I, they got to uh, number five, I was like, all right, they're dragging a bank vault with their cars, with chains throughout a city. They, they understand what, what they're doing. It, it's over the top. And so for me, it's all about tone. What about you guys? Uh, yeah, you know what? I mean, I don't have to see any movie I don't want to see. That's, I mean, you know, I I review films with these guys, but uh, I go see, see films because I enjoy and love films. And I always have a suspension of disbelief on any film because any film you go into, you just, you're like, all right, well, whether it's a romance or a science fiction film or whatever it's going to be, or a comedy, you go in like, all right, I hope that it, it does what it's saying it's going to do and I enjoy the film. And when I come out of the film, I either loved it or I hate it or there was a lot of things that I didn't like about it or things that I loved about it. But, you know, so overall, I mean, I, I love talking about films. That's why I do the show with these guys. So, I mean, I think my critical suspension of disbelief is uh, is always suspended when I'm seeing the film and then it kind of locks back in when I get out of the film, you know? I mean, I... I would say that I feel obligated to see everything, but it's an obligation that I want, if that makes any mm. sense. Like I, 
obviously there's certain movies out there that I get more excited about than others and certain ones that suit my taste more so than others but at the same time I get really excited about the idea of watching things that I mean really if I wasn't in this industry you know central intelligence maybe wouldn't be a top priority but I'm kind of looking forward to it tomorrow I just want to see what they're capable of but going kind of back to what you said instead of tone I think I'd pick character Mm -hmm. that's the first thing that'll make me kind of sit back relax and just take whatever the movie is because you could have you could have ugly visuals you could have a semi-weak story you could have the tone could be uneven but if i'm with the character none of that really matters i think character logic for me too like can take me in in or out of a film because if a character because you can have all the fantastical stuff you know Mm -hmm. flying cars or whatever aliens all that stuff but once characters start doing things that a character wouldn't do that really takes takes me out of it but when you have a bad movie it's when you have either good characters that are not developed enough or the story is you know goes all over the place i mean but there's a mishmash of all those things when you see films sometimes i love the characters in this film but the story sucked you know mm-hmm. or the tone was perfect but i hated the way the characters you know were portrayed so i mean that's where where you have critics come in and say this this is the reason you should see the film this is the reason you shouldn't see the film and everyone has different opinions on them so just like us yeah. it's definitely not a matter of turning your critic brain on right. and off it's like even when I am assigned to do a either sitting here and reviewing something or a written review, there's really no difference for when I'm not assigned to something and I just sit there and watch totally. it for fun. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for Mailbag. Now we're going to take your live Twitter questions. You can tweet us at Collider Video and Ashley will pick out a few. What do we got up first? Okay, well, a ton of people in the chat are talking about Donald Glover and Spider-Man. I tried to look it up. Um, Hollywood Reporter has a headline that says that he joined, but then in the article it says that he's in talks. I don't okay. know if it's true, if it's right. a rumor or not. Does it say not. what, what, what uh, character he would be playing? No, it doesn't. obviously he's not playing Spider-Man. Like, it could be it Miles doesn't. Morales! <laughs> Who knows? It doesn't say. Um, yeah, I, I'm wondering, I mean, I sure. believe the last article I saw said in talks and that they were keeping the character mysterious. So Ooh. as far as I, I know... I like Donald Glover. Uh, I thought he was great in The Martian, and so... I wouldn't mind seeing him in there. I just don't know. I can't judge what Man, he's going to be. Like. Harry Osborn. No, I don't yeah. know. Uh, it's hard to tell who he's going to be. It would be great if they are introducing other Spider-Mans into the Spider-Man Homecoming. Who knows if they're going to do the Miles Morales character, but it'd be fun. Well, that's one heck of an ensemble. Yeah. I love that group there. It says, huh. It says he joined Spider-Man Homecoming. It doesn't say in talks. So, I don't know. It looks like he... But then the article says that he's, okay. he's, he's in talks. He's playing a young vulture. No, I don't know who he's going to play. <laughs> but w- what would you guys think, though, if they actually brought Miles Morales into the same universe? That'd be a little weird, It'd right? It'd be weird, but I wouldn't mind it, especially if it was just like a cameo or something like that. But it's hard to tell. Like, I don't know. I mean, he's a Spider-Man fan, and he's been you know, very upfront about saying, I love Spider-Man. I'd love to play Spider-Man or be in Spider-Man. So maybe he's just being cast as like, hey, He's a good actor. Let's have him in Spider-Man, but not as Spider-Man. We don't know. See, for me though, this is goes kind of goes back to that suspension of disbelief. Uh, of belief is that <laughs> when <laughs> that's why I don't like this. Like, if, if Batman, I don't want like Batgirl or whatever. I don't like this. So if there's one Spider-Man, I don't want another Spider-Man to be in the same universe. It just seems kind of silly. Where it's like, oh, I'm just gonna be like a, a spin-off of you, uh, unless it's like a comedy or something like that. I highly doubt that they would do that, given that this is Spider-Man's first solo mm. movie in the MCU. It just seems like it would end up being too big of an and an unfocused concept to introduce a character like that. Yeah. Or, I mean, if they introduce him and he is playing Miles Morales, maybe he's not Spider-Man yet. Yeah. That, so. uh, okay, maybe we could do something like that. And maybe he takes down the mantle yeah, more further like a, along. Yeah, a little tease or something. I could see him, you know, they integrate him fine as just a character and not in, have anything to do with superheroics. Maybe later he joins. That world. But but in the comic books though, Miles Morales is much younger yes. than Peter Parker, and totally. in this situation would be reversed. Donald Glover is much older than Tom Holland. Sure, why so. not reverse it? Maybe it'll work. Oh. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> All right. What's next? Alan Reed writes: If you had a villain chasing you, who would you want it to be? Uh, I think it'd be fun to be chased by the T one thousand, but I would probably die pretty yeah. quickly. <laughs> How about none of them? I don't want anyone chasing me, especially a villain. 
That's a weird question. Who would I want someone to chase me and murder me? Is um, it really that weird when Jared Leto's Joker is chasing you? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'd want him to catch right. up to I know me. Who, <laughs> I know who Ashley wants Jared Leto to catch her. Well, I'll point out, this shirt that I have on is from The Walking Dead Escape at Comic-Con. So clearly, I do like when zombies chase me. But that is a really fun event. And if you do want to feel that in a yeah. safe environment... That is great. Go All right, check I'll take that, that back. I want to be chased by slow walking zombies that I can cut their heads <laughs> yeah. off with a, with a shovel and then keep running. So. All right, what's next? Ace Kennedy writes, hey guys, love the show. What movie did you think was cool growing up and now as an adult, not so much? Oh man, I don't, it's hard to think of movies. I, and it's funny because I just finished watching uh, the Voltron Netflix series and and I, I enjoyed it. And you know, I loved the series as a, as a child. But if you try and go back and watch, you know, any like for me, Transformers, G.I. Joe or Voltron, those things just do not hold up. You can't want like I know people buy them uh, the Blu-ray sets for nostalgic. I can't imagine sitting down and actually trying to watch every episode of those things, because if you watch Voltron, the original one, all of them were the same. Mm -hmm. Every episode started off the same, the same way they ended. So I, right now I, I'm just thinking of that. Uh, I would have to go with Godzilla, the, all the old Godzillas that I watched when I was a little kid. I just can't watch them now. Like, I tried watching one. I think it was uh, Monster Zero. And it's like, oh, yeah, Ghidra's pretty cool, but it's just so slow. And, like, it just, I just can't go back It's like and recapture that when I was, like, four. It's like, well, because I was four. I mean, that's a, when you try to watch stuff when you were four, and then you're, now you're an adult, it's not the same thing. You're like, I don't know anything, and I'm just absorbing all this cool stuff. And now you're an adult, and you have all these different things that you do, and that's it just it doesn't, it doesn't work. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. I loved You those. loved Batman and Robin? I loved them what? when I was a kid. When I went to my first year in sleepaway camp, you know a poster hung above my bed? A Batman Forever poster. And I'm so embarrassed to this because I, I watch them when they come but on. But you shouldn't be embarrassed, but that's you as a kid. Like I, I always oh. say, like Batman and Robin, if you were like seven years old, you should like that film because it has colorful and it's like, you're not aware of like bad storytelling just Bat yet. Nipples. Yeah, or just like certain things that you're like, you know, as Bat an adult you watch, you're like, oh. Thanks for making me feel better about yeah. that. But I shouldn't put the poster back up, right? You could if you want. If you want to put up the Batman and Robin poster, we will judge you, but you okay. can still put it up. You'll be fully judged. Yeah. All right, what's adult. next? Okay, Dale McCulka writes, Will Doctor Strange put up Civil War or Deadpool numbers at the box office? No way. Yeah, I don't no think way. so. I mean, I, I hope it does well, but not e not even close. Yeah, I think it's going to do really well. I don't think it's going to like you know break a billion dollars. It's it's not that kind of a movie. It's like it's a it's an off brand thing. It'll do Ant Man numbers, is my guess. Yeah, if they do Ant Man numbers for Doctor Strange, I think they'll be very happy yeah. with that. Yeah, I think so. Also, just the time of year it's coming out. It's like the first, my first thought was maybe going to a Guardians of the Galaxy and trying to assess it that way, but I don't think that's the time of year for that kind of haul either. Yeah. yeah. So, Schnepp, you're not going to make any kind of Deadpool predictions yeah. for no. Doctor Strange. No, no, no. I, mean, I don't think it's going to be like 120 yeah. million does. I think it's going to do really well. I, I'm hoping that uh, all I care about is that it's a good Doctor Strange movie. I'm a big Doctor Strange fan. Mm -hmm. I've read a lot of the comics. Love the character. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I don't really care how much money it makes. I don't have personal stakes in the money. Like, ah, they paid me some money. I'm paid by Disney. Mm -hmm. I'm paid. It's a, it doesn't <laughs> matter to me how much it makes. I, of course, I want it to be successful so they can keep making other Marvel films because I love all the Marvel films that they're making. But honestly, how much money it makes, I just want it to be a good film. Didn't Disney pay you for your Alice Through the Looking Glass review? They paid me a lot of money. They're like, hey, yeah. I want you to crap on our movie. Here, right. here's, here's all this money. <laughs> Got a lot of flavory yeah. nuggets from that. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, two, let's do two more. Okay. FN027, blah, 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 right? <laughs> 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 That's a weird name. Can you read that again? <laughs> what is it really? Is it XM757011171? <laughs> now that he has all this attention. He writes, do you want this Simpsons movie too, possibly after the show has ended? Uh, animated, yes. I don't want to see a live action one. I know they talked about it. I just... It defeats what The Simpsons. Would you want it to be about. animated or 3D animated? Remember when Homer You know what? If they the do 3D, 3D anime like the way they did Peanuts, where it right. is 3D but it has that 2D feel to it, I'll be okay with yeah. that. But but I don't want to see like either a live action or a fully 
three D film, like a Pixar film. But won't that's going to be in like fifteen years? Aren't they doing like forty seasons? Yeah, of I mean, Simpsons? what season? Aren't they they're, like I don't season even know. thirty or something? Season twenty eight or something? Yeah. Well, XM seven five three eleven HB. I don't know if they're ever going to make a Simpsons <laughs> movie because they have to cancel the series first. But if they do, I'm with Dennis. Like, do it like that three D kind of style where you keep the elements of what why it's the Simpsons, but make it bigger, make it movie. When you say a live action Simpsons, I picture when the Today Show this year dressed up as the Peanuts character. Oh, that was Did so you look scary. At oh my God. It's terrifying. I, that's a horror movie right there. That's a right horror there. movie. You're, you're I, right. I would, wa I would watch like a Treehouse of Horror feature film if they dressed people up as the Simpsons characters just like that. That's what Rob Zombie's next movie should be. Just get all those weirdos from the Today Show. What show was it? Good Morning America. It was, what was the Today it? Show. Oh my God, horrifying! If you haven't seen those images, you must look. Them look, up. It I up. haven't seen them, so I have will nightmares look them up. for days. Yes. Yeah, all right. nightmare fuel. Last one. Let's end with an intense run. Uh -huh. Alex Kahn writes: Do you think there could be a good Trump movie? Um, <laughs> if they did a documentary and they delve into the behind the scenes stuff, and you get to see what actually is going on and 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 how i mean from what i've read and kind of think like i think this campaign was started off as a publicity thing and right. then it turned into something else so seeing that kind of transformation from a documentary standpoint would be fascinating i would love to see like a horror movie starring like a, a creature that looks like <laughs> the it. orange clown just called the orange clown and his hair is always blowing he's like you know like we're building a wall philip like running around like you know and then he explodes and dies for like a full hour he's just tortured to death in a horrible way i'd love to see that i'd pay money you to see me that. both well that's the movie that's what i'll watch <laughs> the orange clown coming soon to a theater new year subtitle the orange clown also aka idiot that's what i would pay to see. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. I want to thank people joining us at the table today. Schnepp, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> just at John Schnepp. Uh, just, I'm going to start my screenplay, The Orange Clown, as soon as we're done with this. Can't wait to make it. And I'm going to get the Today Show people to be involved in the, the costume creations. Uh, bye. Also, later on, you can also thank you, Superman Celebration, Metropolis, Illinois. It was a great weekend. I highly suggest anybody who's in that area of Illinois just to make a trip down and go to the Super Museum. It's a great place. Everyone there is really friendly. Highly suggest it. Oh, and also you have a show called Collider Heroes. Oh, that's right. On I guess, Wednesdays. I guess I should pimp that too. We moved from Tuesday, which is today. Normally we go, oh, wait, is today Monday? Today is Tuesday. Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. I'm out of my mind. <laughs> um, so we moved from today to Wednesday. Today was, is Nightmares. Which so you'll be on as well. Collider Nightmares, uh, Perry and Clark, and Mark Riley and myself talking about Nightmare, uh, the Orange Clown, and other horror films. And uh, tomorrow will be Collider Heroes. Where we're going to bust out on all the superhero news. Uh, Perry, where can people find you? You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff on Collider Nightmares every Tuesday and on Best of the Week every Saturday. And Ashley? Twitter, Instagram, at Ashley Melva. Happy Tuesday, guys. And Wendy back there talking with the people in the chat room. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget, we have the Independence Day commentary that's coming out tomorrow. We're going to shoot a Finding Dory uh, non-spoilers review pretty soon. And we will see you guys next time, which is tomorrow. Can't, now I'm forgetting what day it is. <laughs> I'm like, is it Friday yet? Sure. Maybe because my mind wants to be Friday. <laughs> Anyways, we'll hey see guys, you guys Hey guys, if tomorrow. you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.